And then I'd like to have a warm welcome for seven minutes, the first speaker of opening one, one. government, Anna Schröder. We, as the opening government, are in favor of this motion. This house would ban, uh, would ban far-right parties from competing in elections in EU uh, countries. Well, um, we have seen uh, far-right far parties coming up for the, well, like, always, like, in, in, in sort of in waves. They, they come, they go, they come, they go. Um, in, the last, uh, in the last debates here at IDEA debate, we spoke a lot, of, uh, a lot about pro pro problems with minorities in the, United, uh, in the European Union, uh, because the European Union is struggling with immigration and with segregation. Uh, the, like, the development uh, is, is of, of, uh, of minorities is, is not really like, going. And so in Germany, we see, we see the, the, the minority of Muslims separating more and more from society. For instance, in the UK, we see the minority of Polish people separating more and more from society. Parties who give a rhetoric of excluding minorities from the society, they, they, give, people, they give people of countries like a sense of, of discrimination, a sense of extreme nationalism. And well, one minute, please. It goes into the extremes. And uh, well, this is the rhetoric right parties use, extreme or far right uh, parties use. Yes. So No, because we believe in, for instance, right now in the economic crisis, in times of times of darkness, people are vulnerable, are sensitive to, to well, usually like extreme or very clear messages that those sorts of parties give us, and that's why like we from the European Union have to protect our people, even like uh, their like their their mind in in, in uh, like times of vulnerability, uh, times of difficulties. Uh, furthermore, far-right parties are often not, not in balance with, with, with the whole politics in the, in, in the country because they, they, they do not share the, like, the most common, common values. For instance, in Holland, we have an extremely, extremely right uh, Christian party who, wants, uh, who don't want women in politics. They don't even, if, it was, if, if, what they, it was, uh, if they were in power, in charge, they would not even let women vote. We, we, like, what, what can we do with this? Other parties don't, have no clue, like, how to cooperate with parties like this. Uh, we, we, like, so, and we cannot afford to sustain, uh, one minute please, to sustain values such, like, we, we have to sustain the values of the, of the European Union, of, of, of tolerance, of, of balance, of, n like, never discrimination, and, yes. What are the bad things that come from only letting people speak their thoughts through politics? Could you please rephrase? What are the bad things that come from only letting people speak about their thoughts through politics and through their these right parties? Well, like these times, we often see that it even goes into hate speech. People are are really turning into the extremes, like with far right parties. It is, it is, they, they, they often even, they become a threat to the society. We've, we've seen it in Norway. Andreas Breivik, he was a member of the far right party as well. Uh, well, yes, yeah, so they, their rhetoric is even, sometimes goes into hate speech. And we, we are against that. We are firm, firm, firmly, we all are against hate speech. It undermines, one minute please, it undermines the position of the, uh, of the European Union. It, it, yeah, okay, yes, please. Uh, don't you think that the people need to be presented with these views in order to see how wrong they are? People, people, like, as I just said, people, if they are in, in times of darkness, times of, when they are sensitive to, 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 to like, they, they are really, at this very moment, people don't know what to do anymore. And if there is a party going into the extreme that says, yeah, you will have a better life if we, if we throw all the Muslims out of our country. It, this is not a solution, and we see it, but our people are vulnerable and sensitive, well, some, some of our people. Uh, well, and as, as well, like, the economic crisis, uh, difficult, and as well as difficulties with immigration, uh, they, they make, uh, like, U uh, European Union problems difficult to solve. 
Because, for instance, again, the problems with minorities we have they, we, in debates, we, we cannot cooperate with parties like this. It, it's just, it goes against everything we, we are aiming at. Um, furthermore, we have to protect everyone in the European Union. We don't want to, 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 to have people speak in our, in our, in our own, like, in our own European Union against, against, like, like firmly against people who are yeah. one of us, like, in, yes. But don't these minorities also have their parties where they can speak their thoughts? No, since they are minorities, we even have, like, the Roma, Roma people in very different countries, they are like with, with such little people, but they are in, in such severe circumstances they live in. And, and still you have the extreme right parties who say, well, they're, they're nothing to us. Let's just throw them out to wherever. We don't want them. This goes too far. We should help them. Um, like, and we are all responsible for this. So as I, uh, let me, like, that as, again, the uh, economical crisis um, we have, since the economic crisis, in many countries, extreme right parties uh, came up, they, ro they rose, and we, like, we, we, we see that it, it's getting more difficult every, every day to, to, to work together, and uh, yes. So let me link this, uh, these arguments back to, back to the motion. If we really ban far-right parties from the European Union, we will be able to cooperate better. We'll be able to come to the solutions better. We will have happier people. We have more wealth, more pros uh, prosperity. Everything will, like, people's mindset will be, will, will be even, like, more equal, probably, if we speak all with one voice here in the European Union. So, uh, yes, I want to thank you. I like, uh, yes, and, okay, <laughs> bye. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Anna Schroeder. Well done. As a reminder for the audience, I'd like to be a little bit more quiet. It's a little bit distracting once in a while. And then I'd like to have the first speaker of opening opposition, a warm welcome, Matush Diveki. Woo! So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I would like to talk about our point of view, how we see uh, this motion should be dealt. Uh, first of all, we believe in our right of being represented. I will try to show you uh, why this value or why this criteria is so important for us. So, first of all, uh, let's talk about the uh, let's talk about government's point of view, and I will try to show you. Uh, why we do not agree with them at all. Uh, Prime Minister uh, was talking about excluding minorities and the uh, level of discrimination against these uh, minorities. However, we believe that uh, uh, since we want to have a variety of uh, political parties in a political scene, so we believe that also these minorities will be represented <laughs> by uh, parties uh, which will be focused on these minorities. No, thank you. Um, uh, this means that uh, our point of view is to have a huge amount of parties, a uh, high level of variety, which will lead to the every citizen of certain country will be represented in, yes? Well, the problem is that they really harm third parties, like these parties that you are sustaining. And in this case, it is legitimate, it is legitimate to actually ban Thank them. you. Uh, I do not think that a uh, uh, single one party can harm any others, uh, because uh, each party is only presenting their own opinions, their own points of view. What we want to say, and what we see in this case, is that if the party will be elected, it represents the views of majorities. And this is the democratic point of view. And we think that uh, if the majority wants to, uh, wants to control its country in a certain way, in a certain line, it's OK to vote for these countries, to, uh, parties, to be elected, since they represent the majority of that certain country. Uh, another, thank you. Another point made by, uh, no, thank you, in a second. 
another point made by the government uh, was about the cooperation with these uh, far-right parties. Uh, we believe that uh, when the party is far-right, we do not see the point that there should be any, uh, any harm in the cooperation with such party. We believe that, uh, e we believe that uh, even far-right party or any other party which uh, represents certain opinions of certain citizens uh, can cooperate uh, and uh, can cooperate with other parties. We do not see this assumption uh, be clearly explained, and uh, so we do not consider this an important. Uh, okay, so uh, as I have Could already you please? yes, we also believe in the right to be represented, but these uh, uh, far right parties, by definition, just ignore minorities. Thank you. Uh, uh, far right parties are focused on representing. Yes, the, na the nation, the original inhabitants or citizens of the nation. However, what we have said is that also these uh, minorities will be represented by their certain parties, which really the political scene uh, could cooperate with these far-right parties. So it's about, no thank you, it's all about the variety in the political scene. Uh, uh, so. Uh, what we want to uh, say about more is that the state or uh, we have no right to ban parties. Let's have a look in our past, what we will be trying to achieve in our past. Uh, we were, we uh, made certain values, we made certain criteria which uh, we considered as essential for, uh, for peaceful life in uh, our countries. And one of such rights, which, uh, which was uh, for a long time uh, not uh, listened and not uh, take uh, care of this right, was the freedom of speech. What we want to say is that uh, in, our, uh, in our past, uh, people tried to issue the, this right and to establish it as, a, as an essential right of uh, human beings. And what you want to do, uh, government is that you will ban or you will be you will take uh, this right from uh, far right parties just because they are uh, different just because you do not consider them as uh, as suitable for political scene uh, yes please yes so don't you now recognize that especially in times of crisis the extreme left right parties arise so you, we've seen it in the Second World War, but it, and after, before this, the, Germany was in a huge crisis, and the, the Germans start to vote on the extreme right Nazi party. Now, as well, we see it as well here in, in the Netherlands. So, like, this is, it is just not, not, we have, the people are vulnerable in these times. Don't you recognize this? Thank you. No, I do not recognize it. Uh, uh, <laughs> well, I think that uh, in, uh, not just in the times of crisis, uh, there are created or represented far-right parties, and we believe that uh, yes, uh, in the times of crisis, also the parties dealing or representing the minorities uh, would uh, uh, would candidate to the political scene, and so uh, we do not consider the time of crisis as. Uh, a reason for banning the far-right parties uh, from competing in the political scene. So uh, our criteria and our aim is to establish the variety of parties in political scene. As I have already said, it's important for us because when the because only when we have uh, in the political scene different points of view, different ideas, and different aims, the some kind of compromise can be made, which will represent the majority or each citizen of that certain country. And so our criteria is the, is the right of being represented and also uh, the right of uh, free speech. Uh, far right, uh, okay. Uh, uh, well, if we will ban uh, these countries, like uh, these parties, the end. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> you, uh, <laughs>
officially you're allowed to finish your last sentence at the seven minute break, but uh, thank you very much, Matouche. Um, I'd also like to remind the speakers, when you make a point of information, try and pull a little bit the microphone so that people at the judging panel at least can hear you. Um, I think that's important. And now to have the second speech of opening government for seven minutes, I'd like to have a warm welcome for Irina Suetian. <laughs> loved about uh, Derek's speech in American History X was that he managed to convince a bunch of people in like five or ten minutes that they should kill all the black, all the Asian, and all the Muslims ne near them. And he did that through a, simply, uh, through a simple rhetoric. He just like went to the, with them outside and showed them all the places where their friends worked and now Asian people work, black people work, and so on. So he just used a simple rhetoric and managed, managed to convince a, a, a lot of people to kill um, minorities, to actually hate minorities, and to actually make, make, uh, make this their purpose in life. So this is exactly what far-right parties do. Far-right parties are not, are not there only to represent people, are there to actually tell people that they should exclude minorities from the society, that minorities are actually not there, that they, are, they don't have the right to be in the society, or like my colleague uh, has shown you in whole, Holland, that women shouldn't vote or, 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 any, or, or any other examples. So this is exactly what we are talking about. Now I have mainly four, uh, four points in my speech. First, I'm going to talk about the point of freedom that the opposition made. Secondly, I'm going to talk about the context and what is the specific context that we are, we are actually in, in now in the EU. Thirdly, I'm going to talk about the mechanism and how exactly these far-right parties uh, uh, lead to more hatred in the society, to more discrimination and to no tolerance at all. And my last point would be about the EU stance and why it is important for the EU to actually take a stance. Now, firstly, on the point of freedom. Now, we do believe that they are extremely wrong when they are arguing that basically they have the, the freedom of speech. But in the same time, they are taking freedom from the minorities. Because when, the moment when, you, no thank you, the moment when your freedom ends, it is the moment when you are actually taking someone else's freedom away. And we believe that because of the fact that they are actually incentivizing people to hate minorities, to hate, to hate other parts of the society, we are actually denying, we are actually, uh, we are actually harming these minorities through, uh, through giving uh, far-right parties freedom of speech. And we believe that it is actually, it is actually, um, it is actually right and it is the right thing to do for the, for the EU to actually ban uh, far-right parties because of the fact that we, we are able to put an end at, at freedom of, of, of speech, exactly like we, we put an end, for instance, when we decided to ban hate speech in the society because we realized that hate speech only brings more hatred in the society and harms other parties from the society. We do that as societies, and it's exactly what we need to do in order to have more tolerance and less discrimination. No, thank you. Now, to, to my second point, and about context. Now, we do believe that we are facing a major problem right now in the EU. We do believe that we are struggling with integration because of the fact that we have like huge immigration, like huge flow of immigrants in the EU. For instance, in Germany, Angela Merkel doesn't have right now a solution after like Two, two years of actually struggling to integrate Muslim communities, but it actually she can't really find a solution to integrate these people in, in the society. We do have slums where, where immigrants live. We do have uh, an increasing crime rate because of the fact that they are segregated from the society, because of the fact that they yeah. actually don't really have jobs, that they, they are discriminated, no thank you, in the EU. So we do have, a, um, uh, since uh, a problem, a problem right now in the EU. But furthermore, we do, we are right now in an economic crisis. So we do, people are really vulnerable to all kinds of of um, of, of rhetoric. So we do believe that the, spe the spe specific context in which we are living in nowadays is extremely relevant to the motion. 
And this, um, this brings me to my, to my third point, and this is the mechanism. Now, we believe that when we have such, such parties with such a rhetoric, that they are telling you basically, look, he's the one who stole your job yesterday. He's the one that he's guilty because you don't have a job, because your daughter, because, because your son died yesterday on the street, because he's a nigger, and what he does is that he kills people. Yes, that is the kind of rhetoric that far-right party actually have. And because of the fact that I can see right now the reactions on your face, I can see right now that you don't agree with, with these kind of things. Point you, you no, thank you. Uh, I can I can understand that you actually you actually comprehend why um, why this why this rhetoric is extremely appealing to people because when people are frustrated because when people don't really have jobs because when people all that see is that they have a segregated society they tend to be very very vulnerable to this kind of rhetoric. They tend to empathize really easily to this kind of, of rhetoric, and they tend to to uh, to really hate them. Yes. The person in this room is very smart and knows that far right people are outrageous. Not the layman in every country knows that. We need them to show their faces so we could get everybody as smart as people in this room to start hating those far right bastards. But the problem is that the majority of the population in a country that is n doesn't really know this. The problem is that they are vulnerable. The problem is that they are frustrated. The problem is that they actually believe that these kind of parties are right because they actually believe that these kind of parties bring them the solution. Because they see reality. And reality is that their jobs are being taken away by immigrants. Now, on my last point, and this is about the EU stance. Now, we believe that it's extremely important for the EU to actually take a stance. Because whilst the EU is arguing that we need tolerance, that we don't accept discrimination in our society, it, 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 also, it uh, also allows these, these kind of parties to, to hold speeches and to persuade people to come with them, to vote for them, and to actually believe in, in what they're saying. So we believe that this, is, uh, this goes against EU, EU principles and this actually undermines the position of the EU and this actually makes integration way more difficult because no, the minorities don't really think that the EU is in favor of them. The minorities don't really think that the society will accept them because of the fact that they always see these people, this rhetoric, this, this beliefs in the society. Now because of the fact that we do want to stop this and we do want the European, uh, European Union to take a stance and to say really no to, to discrimination, please vote for the proposition. And now we turn to the final speech of the first half of the table. I'd like to have a warm welcome for opening opposition, Adriana Panait. Well done. Let's imagine that we have already banned the far right parties. That doesn't mean that now, in this day, I can't have a hate speech, a rhetorical hate speech about minorities and that you won't believe me. The far-right parties are only the instrument that people who have this kind of ideas use in order to feel represented, are only the instrument to uh, diminish the tensions between these people and minorities, are only the instrument to make this kind of go out there and that somebody is listening to them also. because the minorities' rights are also put in out there through other parties, especially because there are more parties that protect minorities and their rights than there are national parties. And we furthermore believe that if the majority of people do go and agree with the far-right parties, then it's all right, because that's what the majority wants, because that's the way that people think. Because yes. and if the majority, no, thank you, and if the majority of the people believe in a in an idea, in a kind of, in a, a way, in this way of seeing the world, then it's their right to have a saying and to change the world and make it that way. And 
What is the EU? What does the European Union stand for? It stands for diversity. And what do we understand for diversity? It's true that we understand gender. It's true that we understand color. It's true that we understand religion. But we also understand ideas. And this is why today we should support different ideas. This is why today we should let people with different ideas tell them up and let them speak their ideas out there. And we believe by letting this, we are also informing the people about what is wrong and what is right. Because, no, thank you. Because if a person has been raised in the kind of society that we are raised nowadays, a multicultural one, one day will see a hate speech, one day will see a national uh, right for party talking out there, they would see that that is wrong. They would see that actually those things are not uh, how the, it's not the way the reality works. And we believe that this is actually how the way of changing the mentality, by letting people talk their ideas and letting people analyze the ideas of the other and taking decisions for themselves. Yes. But what is the difference between hate speech and between far right politicians uh, like speak against minorities? Well, they can have a space hate speech that you've said they do have, but we believe that actually they are not, they do not hold hate speeches, they only say their ideas out there loud, they only say that, oh, uh, well, they only state what they think about the way the society works. But, well, that doesn't actually have anything to do. Well, we'll go past this. And um, now let's talk about a bit, a bit about the context and uh, about how the, actually the far right parties are the one uh, because of which, which, which fault the Roma people don't have where to live, the one of which fault uh, the minorities are not interpreted. We believe that this is not so. We believe that, that just by letting people talk about what they think doesn't mean that actually you are suppressing a minority because there are many other people that actually protect that minority. We believe that it actually, it's actually the state's fault that it cannot uh, protect those minorities and not the far right parties. Uh, and they have uh, failed to show us the link between how be, be, the link between the simple and sheer existence of far right parties and uh, the uh, existence of the prosecution of minorities. And we would invite the, uh, the government to show us the link. More, moreover, let's talk a bit the conflicts that would arise if we do not let people talk. And we have seen that happen over and over again. We have seen that if, when, people are, uh, when people cannot talk freely, let's think about the communist period, when they couldn't express their ideas, when just saying that your president is bad would get you into prison. When, if we caught this way of letting them express themselves, then frustration will come in them, then frustration will go, and then conflicts will arise, then there will be riots, then those people will go out in the street and say, we want to have the right to speak. And we believe that it's their right to have this right to speak. They have the right to be represented in parties, in nations, and in the European Union. They okay. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, but they have the right to speak but not in Parliament. What, what is the harm in, uh, uh, of not having them speaking in the Parliament? Well, the, par the harm of not having let them speak in the Parliament is the harm that they are not actually represented, they are not actually listened to, and this is the big harm. And it's your duty to show us the harm of being represented in the Parliament. And you haven't done that yet. So, um, going back to what I was telling about conflicts. Furthermore, let's imagine a world where most of the people are for right, uh, for, uh, right parties. If we ban these parties, these people, as I said, oh, will feel um, that they not, do not have the right to speak. The other part of the population would feel that these people are wrong. And we believe nowadays that any idea is right, that any vote is right, because it's right for you, it's your decision. And if it's right for you, then it should be right for everyone from, your point of, uh, from the point of view that comes from your part. So we believe that when we would ban these uh, far-right parties, we would actually create conflict between in the society, and we would go actually uh, make segre segregation in the society. No, thank you. Because the rest of the society would think that people that have ideas from the far-right parties are wrong, would think that would not respect their ideas anymore, and would not want to interact with them anymore. 
And now let's talk about a bit about the informational part. And that's I've said before, it's very important to have these far right parties just to inform the people, the rest of us, that there are people which think this way. Just to inform the people that there are, th uh, there are, there are persons that do not agree with the way uh, the things work. And so that they would make afterwards the decision whether or not that is wrong or right. And, so, and that in the end, everybody would have an informed decision and would know how to do. And in conclusion, because we, today the opposition stands for diversity in ideas, because today we state for democracy and for a variety of parties and for representation of every and each individual of us, and because today we believe that there is actually no connection between what happens to the minorities and the shared existence of far-right parties, please vote for the opposition. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We've seen an incredible debate so far in the first half of the table, and let's see if the second half of the debate can be as incredible or even more incredible. I'd like to invite to the floor from closing government for seven minutes, Moimir Stelik. Ladies and gentlemen, the government, the, the opposition was talking all the time about segregation and tension and about how banning these parties is going to cause it. But what they do not realize is that exactly the parties they're speaking to are the parties creating the most segregation and the most tension in the European Union that we ever had. They are talking about representation while not realizing that while allowing these radical parties, they are taking representation away from minorities, and they are talking about representation while not realizing that these people still can be represented. Only their radical nationalist right far opinion is not gonna be in the parliament, and that's the only thing we're doing. So for all these reasons, I'm going to present you, uh, in my case, why is it legitimate for EU to do something like that, why these parties are not good for European Union, and that's why it cannot allow them, and then I'm going to explain you why is it not good for the country itself? But first of all, let's, let's come to the rebuttal. They were talking about minority parties being in the parliament and many minority parties being in the parliament. And yes, No, thank you. And pro providing this as a justification for far-right parties to be in the parliament too. But what they do not realize is that minority parties need to be in the parliament because they are minorities. Every other party is a majority party and that's why, that, that's why we are providing extra rights to the minorities because we see that they are being pushed back. And it is exactly the terrifying right parties are doing. Okay, now, okay, please. I'm sorry, uh, on your previous point, how are these parties fully represented if they're not in parliament? We don't need them represented. We believe that if we get into the parliament, they're causing so much harm that we have the right to ban it. First of all, we have to realize that democracy is not allowing parties that go against the democracy in the parliament. There are communist parties being banned throughout the Europe. There's workers' party banned in Czech Republic. And this is exactly the same point. Because European Union cannot allow parties that are going against European Union in the parliament. Because that's fundamentally wrong. So why are these parties going against the European Union? What, these party, what is the, European, what is the, the idea of European Union is to drive from nationalism towards multinationalism and to drive from intolerance and tensions towards tolerance and inclusion. But on the other side, what we, ha what we see is that exactly these parties are doing the exact opposite. These parties are driving against the European Union. These parties, no thank you, are trying to to, 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 to put the, the European uh, Union away, and that, that is exactly the problem. These countries can exist, but can never exist in the European Union, because they are fundamentally contradicting the whole idea of the European Union. <clears throat> what we have to realize is now that we have this great union, the European Union, and we gain so much from it. We gain from it politically, we gain from it socially, and now these parties are trying to destroy it. What is really important that <clears throat> All the tensions, all the things uh, 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 we ourselves said that we wanted. No, thank you. But what happened is that now when a bad situation came, now we are not that confident about it anymore. We took the, the minorities and we took the immigrants into our country and let them work when the situation was good. And now when, when the situation is getting worse, we just want to kick them out. But we do not believe that this is right because these, these people are already part of our society. So can, we cannot just, just put them apart well, well, as the right or nationalist parties want. Yes. 
yes, please. If the majority of the people doesn't think that this is right, then they won't vote for this party. So that this surprise, surprise. Happen. I don't believe that majority is always right. We've seen majority being wrong. And right now, if, uh, and now in my next point, I'm going to explain you why the majority is wrong and why exactly the tools of the right, uh, far right parties are exactly the tools that are manipulative and that are making, uh, making uh, the majority of people of people wrong. So now, uh, why, now let's take a look at how these parties are not good for the politics and not good for the home countries. First of all, let's take a look on how these parties actually get into politics. They do not ex exactly get into politics in a normal situation. They are getting into politics when the situation is desperate and when things are going wrong. So if, if the situation was not as it is and people are thinking rationally, well, these parties would never get into parliament. What we have to realize is that right now, people are in a very special situation and we do not believe that people throughout Europe are deciding rationally right now because what is going on is that these parties are are trying to are using their manipulative rhetorics and are trying to show they are trying to find somebody to blame they are finding minorities and are uh, uh, and and putting all the blame on them uh, and this is not exactly true because um, that's not, not exactly what is happening because we already benefited from the minorities. No, thank you. So what we have to realize is that these parties are only getting into the parliament because the situation is desperate. And if people were thinking rationally and they were not, um, the, 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 the spectrum was not skewed, they would never, never get into the politics. And what we also have to realize, no, thank you, is that fundamental principle of these parties is wrong because the aim of these parties is to create tension because these parties never get elected if there is no tension. These parties have to keep creating Creating problems, these parties have to keep pointing at the, the minorities and showing what they do wrong. Otherwise, these parties will not get elected because there is going to be no need for them. Uh, yes, please. So, what you're trying to say is that people generally lose the fundamental pr principles they believe in, like killing other people and br taking all. No, the I believe that the these parties are able to manipulate people in order not to see what are the fundamental principles. So, I, I believe that if these countries, uh, if the only aim of these parties and the only thing that is uh, like putting power into hands of these parties in manip is manipulation and creating hatred, we do not believe that is is any any um, um, in any contrast with. The European Union and the democracy as itself and that's why these countries should not be allowed in the European Union. Also very important thing is what we have to realize is that what do these parties do is that they screw the political spectrum. What they do is that they dry away from all the important issues like economics and, and, politi and politics and social issues and what they do is that they only find blamers and put all the, uh, put all the um, all the lights on unimportant issues, so then they can they uh, they, they, think, uh, they can do what they want. So and this is really important because then these parties are not good for for the countries because they are not able to provide solutions. They are not representing they are not representing economical views. They are only representing nationalist views that, uh, and pushing all the important issues backwards by this policy. What we have to take a look is uh, we have to take a look at the countries where the radical far right parties are right now being elected. It's green and Hungary and we can see that these kind of these parties are exactly the parties that are driving towards uh, oppression of press and oppression of minorities and we do not believe that these countries are doing better off with the far right parties in the parliament also we have to take a look in Bosnia and Herzegovina where there are there, the, the whole police is only driven by the nationalist issue and that's why we have 35 percent unemployment there and nothing is being solved because in the politics if economic issues and the important things are not being represented then the country cannot work so for the reason of these national parties going away against our European Union and of the reason of these parties not being good for the country, I'm proud to propose. Thank you very much. And now to open the floor for closing opposition, I'd like to give the floor for seven minutes to Karl Lell. You have fans. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the adjudicator panel, fellow debaters, the important man from the European Commission, uh, <laughs> welcome. Uh, I'm already thinking that I won for three reasons. One, I'm in the finals. Two, I have a beautiful, smart, funny, elegant debate partner. I think she deserves an applause. <laughs> And three, as an Estonian, I'm very proud that finally there's a final where there are no Latvians. <laughs> now, 
getting into this debate. Um, there's a fundamental underlying assumption that the government has constantly made that we would love to challenge. And that assumption is that neo-Nazis will come back to power. They have always believed in that. And as far as I can think about European history, then after Hitler, they haven't done that really. So we have like 60 years of disproving them. Uh, while they haven't really given us like any good examples, so I'd love to challenge them in this point to say like, come on, if no, thank you. If this is really happening, you had three speeches to give us examples. Uh, we did hear, hear, no, thank you. We did, you had your time. We heard something about Bosnia and Herzegovina. Um, now, my geography and stuff like that isn't really brilliant, but somehow I feel that is a bit irrelevant. Okay, um, I have three points of rebuttal. The first point of rebuttal goes to the first government. They say that you're not allowed to harm people, that that is how you judge whether a party is uh, legitimate or not, if it harms the people or not. We say under that logic, basically every political party is illegitimate. You should clearly ban all socialist parties because they redistribute wealth, which is bad for me. They take my money and give it to poor people. So we say that under that logic, you should ban most of the parties. You should ban probably every liberal party because the main line of a liberal party is we don't care for you, do it yourself, right? And we say that is very hard, hard for people, for example, elderly people who probably don't have pensions anymore because there's a liberal party. So we say under that logic, if we ban everything that harms, you should ban basically every um, political party. We don't care, we don't agree with them. Um, Secondly, they say that you know, these radical parties take away somebody's voice and there suddenly will be no minority parties. We haven't really understood how that works because there are like, there's a, that's a different motion to debate about. And you know, if you're worried, we'll clearly give, uh, gladly give minority parties 10% of parliament representation. And we have dealt with that problem. You can easily, that doesn't mean you need to ban these far right people. And three, um, they say that you know that um, these parties are fundamentally wrong, right? No, thank you. And I'd like to put that into a historical perspective. What means if a political party is fundamentally wrong or not? We say that under that logic, we couldn't have liberalism because the conservatives in the 18th and 19th century believed that liberalism is fundamentally wrong and you can't have that. So I'd just like to put that into perspective when, when stuff is really fundamentally wrong and when not. Now, uh, me, myself, I'm gonna have a small chat about three things. One, just very briefly, of course neo-Nazis are stupid. Um, two, we want to show the society how stupid they are. And three, we think it's better to have neo-Nazis believing that they have a chance. <laughs> okay, number one. This is something that I just want to get out of the way. Of course we believe that killing Jews, killing black, black people, Muslims, women, Armenian people, or Latvian is bad. <laughs> Sending them... On, Yes, even Latvians. Uh, sending them out of your country is bad. We're not here to debate about that. We don't have to prove that, you know, discriminating horribly is a good thing. That's not the burden of proof for side opposition today. So let's just get that out of the way. Secondly, we say that we need to show the society how wrong these people are. That's something that I already addressed in my POI when I said that we are here and we are smart people who know that far right people are stupid, but not everybody knows that. No, thank you. Uh, after my point, um, not everybody knows that. We say that every sensible person agrees that these political ideas that they have are idiots, but we say that not every, uh, but some people know that, not everybody knows that, and we need to show that to people. We need every time when a far right person comes out, we need to show him, after my sentence, we have to show people who this person is, we have to ridicule them, we have to show that he's an idiot, he's stupid, we don't want these people, these ideas are wrong, if you thought about those ideas at home, you are wrong, that's stupid, that is not what we want the society to look like, we, we have to show and ridicule. I feel you're kind of failing in Hungary and Greece. I think you're kind of failing in explaining us, you know, why, why the economic situation is like a special case in this part. We say that what I will explain to you, I will explain to you this in my final point, that we are not failing in Hungary and Greece because the alternative, as Stephen Nolan can tell you, is much more worse. Now, um, number two. Um, uh, we, oh, sorry, that is number three. We want to uh, show that these people... Uh, who these people are and we want to know what these people are doing and we want to give these people a chance. No, thank you. Uh, we say that people fundamentally want to express ideas, whatever kind of ideas these are, and we say that people will find 
how to express those ideas. People are clever, and if you don't give people legitimate ways of expressing their ideas, people will find out illegitimate ways of expressing their ideas. This is where I'm answering the POI about Greece. If you don't give people uh, the representation, then what happens is that they will go to arms. Look at what the IRA has done in Ireland. Look at the, all the other examples. If you don't give people a chance uh, to uh, talk to, about their issues in a political way, they will find an illegal way, mainly guns, bombing, and terrorist acts. And we say that we would rather not have those things. No, thank you. What we say is that it is much better if we let those people into the parliament where they have a minority vote probably because I really don't believe, even though I'm a debater and I know you will all hate me for this sentence, I don't really believe you can change the world in one sentence, which is something that the government fundamentally believes. The government believes that fascist people are not only fascist, but they are all brilliant speakers that will change your mind in five minutes. In that case, we couldn't have this debate because all debaters would be fascist, right? So we say that that's underlying it, a, a wrong assumption. So we say we would rather have these people in the parliament for a bit than let those people go out your way out of time, uh, than let those people go out of the country. What have I told you? One, of course they're bad. Two, we need, to show the, we need to show people that they are bad. I had 10th graders in my class who went Heil Hitler because they had had just a history, history lesson that they thought it was funny. After a three minute YouTube video that I showed them, it was not funny and they said we're sorry and we need to show people that uh, these people are wrong. And thirdly, it's better to have them speak a bit than kill a bit. Thank you. Woo! Thank you very much. And to close the case on government side, the final speech, the whip speech for closing government, Stefana Popa. Warm round of applause. Okay. First, I'm going to speak about um, representation and why, um, uh, about representation. And second of all, why it is legitimate and why EU should really, do the, uh, should really um, pass this motion. Okay, about representation. Uh, now, we all know that in the party we, ha we uh, tend to represent rational people. That's the main reason why we don't have animal represented in the party or mad people represented in the party. We need Rash, um, we need to, uh, to have represented uh, rational people. So now let's take a look at this uh, far right parties. Let's uh, see if they are rational. First, let's uh, take a look at the context uh, in which uh, um, they gain the power. Um, as, as we've seen um, along history, they gain power when the situation in the country is very controversial and um, when people are very afraid, when people don't think rational anymore. That's wh uh, when these p uh, kind of parties are gaining uh, credibility because they propose irrational, um, irrational solutions. And, no thank you, and um, uh, a, a very um, nice proof of, the, of this is the reason the opposition gave us for these parties to come to, to uh, have the right to to be represented because otherwise they would go would, would go to arms so that's why they need we need these parties to be represented because they are, we are afraid of them so they uh, provide us a, an irrational reason for doing this so um, considering uh, uh, this, we believe that we shouldn't have these kind of parties. They are not logical, they are not, uh, so they, they, um, they didn't provide us any reason, uh, any logical reason why they should be represented. And moreover, they will have, they will still have the, no thank you, the right to speak, but they won't have the right to vote because, um, no thank you, because here they, uh, kind of ignore the uh, role of a party. A party have uh, um, uh, have executive power, have the, uh, the power to vote laws, laws which uh, 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 which applies in, in in the country and which um, uh, throughout which things um, uh, things work. So they have power. Uh, considering all this, 
we should uh, you, we shouldn't uh, no thank you we shouldn't allow these parties just because we are afraid of them okay um, um, second about my uh, about why EU really shouldn't uh, do this and this is the mo uh, sh really uh, really should do this and this is the most important thing uh, well let's speak about nationalism it is clear that this kind of party are very nationalist they provide um, uh, they, they think uh, what is um, bad about them is that they provide false solutions for the pr uh, problem um, uh, for problems. Uh, they just point their finger at my uh, at minorities for each and every problem that uh, no thank you that uh, appeared. So um, uh, that's why we don't think that uh, nationalism is, um, is is really the uh, right way to solve a problem. Yes. They are citizens of our country. They have ideas and opinions, and they should be tolerated. Okay, and put thank in the, you. Have uh, yes, their they ideas. have ideas, but they are not made. I, I hope that they are not made only by these kind of ideas. Really, I def, I believe that um, uh, any other part, if they are rational people, uh, any other party could represent it. But these kind of ideas are not rational, so they shouldn't be represented um, in the um, uh, in politics. No, thank you. Uh, so, but why it is na uh, nationalism so good? We have speak, uh, we have spoken about uh, EU value, values, which are um, uh, contradicted by this kind of party. But why these EU values are so uh, so imp uh, so important? I mean, uh, unity. Well, after the Second World War, the, um, um, in the EU, conflicts didn't, didn't appear just because nationalism got to a low, lower level. Because when we are very nation, nationalist, we tend to think only about ourselves. We tend to ignore the, other, uh, our, the, the ones around us. And uh, what we do believe is that this kind of, uh, this, this kind of parties will divide EU. Uh, uh, beca because uh, they only think about uh, um, themselves and uh, themselves, and uh, they tend to uh, ignore. No, thank you. They tend to ignore uh, any other um, um, any other uh, um, n uh, nation. So, uh, yeah. So, what you're trying to say that it's better to have people who feel oppressed and not represented than having a tiny amount in parliament who actually are far right. No, I d I'm s what I'm saying is that uh, far-right parties, by definition, don't represent at all minorities. And not only that they don't represent minorities, but they, um, they oppress them, they, t t t they tend to reject them. And this, uh, and this, kind, of, um, th this kind of policy, uh, no thank you, uh, could, could lead to conflict because these people would, fe uh, would feel rejected and these people uh, w would really have a rational uh, reason to, uh, to, uh, to go to arms. Well, otherwise, these, um, otherwise uh, these people that you are, uh, you are speaking about which would feel so bad uh, because of not being represented um, by far right parties have First, irrational motive, um, uh, reasons, and um, uh, second of all, um, they, um, they, they sh uh, still have the right to speak, but they, uh, they can't do harm to our society. So that's why we think uh, you should pass the motion. Thank you. Thank you very much. And now to sum up for the opposition side and to sum up the entire debate, I'd like to have a thundering applause for Simona Sara Finovska. Thank you. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I have the honor to close this debate and to prove to you that fundamentally what the government was proposing was irrational. So, the key term that we heard today was what's rational, what's irrational. Let's put it simply. What the government is trying to prove to you is that in times of crisis, people become stupid. People reject the beliefs that are at their fundament, at their core. People reject the beliefs, such as the belief that minorities are good and that every human deserves a right to live in their country, and they go into these far extremist parties. This is not true, ladies and gentlemen, because 
People know what they believe in and people do not just accept things, as, do, do not take things for granted. It's not that easy to manipulate people. For example, if you put one far rightist person in a room with a bunch of people who are rational enough to think for themselves, to see that what the ideas that he's claiming are wrong, it will not only lead to them not believing in his opinions, no thank you madam, not no, only leads to... Sorry. <laughs> uh, not only leads to him, uh, not only leads to him not being appreciated, but it will also inform the people that far right movements are bad, and that is what the opposition is trying to tell you: that having these people in elections, in government, is there to inform the. No, the normal people, the general people, that far-right movements are bad, that at the core, the extremist things that they do is not supposed to be accepted. No, thank you. So, I would like to present to you the four questions that I find at the, more, the four clash points of this debate. The first question being, how harmful is every party in general? The second one being, is variety good or is it bad? The, second, the third one being, are people convinced and are people manipulated? And the fourth one being, what is the focus of the right, far right parties? First, let's begin with how harmful this is. So, what they, the government claimed is that it is hard to co cooperate with these parties, is that we cannot find any middle ground between us. However, don't we see this everywhere? Don't we see that every party has some sort of belief that clashes with another party. Everyone, like my partner said, every party harms. So if we go with the value that we do not want parties that provide harmful or contradicting or good and bad solutions to, to some principles or to some problems I found, then we will have no parties in elections and no parties in government because every party has some sort of blunder. Every party has something that it's claiming is the solution, which in fact it is not. So we cannot say that these, government, uh, these parties don't deserve to be elected or considered in elections just because their solutions, when seen in retrospect, don't make sense. The people need to have a, to, need to have a right to choose. Secondly, what is variety and is it good or bad? Here we had a clash point between the freedom of expression and what these parties are saying. What the first table of the opposition was saying is that the part, everyone deserves to be expressed, that they deserve to say their ideas, that in a democratic system, they are allowed to say what they think. No, thank you. And they are allowed to say what they think and they are allowed to have these beliefs as their own and to share them with other people. Yes, this is true. But also let's take into consideration the other aspect of this, the fact that when the people see the extremist movement of this party, see the way these parties say, let's kill the minorities or whatever the government is saying that these parties say, they will, uh, no, thank you, madam. Uh, these, the people will actually see these parties for what, what they really are, no, thank you. And they will actually see what these people are trying to claim and they will actually move away from the far right movement because none of the sensible, yes, madam. And what will these people gain if they are in the party uh, different from just speaking loud without being in Well, the they will have the right to be represented and to express their beliefs. Every person has a right to be represented and to express his beliefs. But what we're trying to say is that when the majority, the sensible people, the people who know what they believe, see the far right parties, they will be informed of their policies and they will actually move away from them. Because people know, thank you, because People actually know that it's bad to kill minorities. People hold the belief of the European Union that people, that everyone should be united in diversity and that everyone should be equal. And that is why, with actually letting the, these parties be in elections, we're letting people see that they should not vote for these parties. No, thank you, madam. And never mind, <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> the third one, <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, the third point being, how easy is it exactly to manipulate with people? So what the proposition was trying to say is that in times of crisis, you have desperate people, you have irrational people, you have people who are basically on the level of chimpanzees and they don't think for themselves. This is not true. The, these people are not, do not become, no thank you madam, these people do not become stupid just because they don't have money. They still have the core beliefs of their heart. So if the people believe 
the, if the people believe in the foundation of the far right parties, then let it be so. Then let them vote for it. But the majority doesn't. The majority of the sensible people, no thank you. The majority of the sensible people that we see today do not want to vote for these parties. And that's why there are no countries in which these parties have a majority vote and have a majority of seats in parliament. No thank you. So. How effective is this really? How, how much change can one far-right party, one far-right person make in an entire representative dem democracy? Not much, but how much problems can it solve? Well, plenty, no thank you. Plenty of problems because when we see that people are feeling oppressed, when people feel that they cannot express their voice, then it is far worse than letting them express their voices and letting them do what they want to in a simple way. So what they're trying to say is that it's, it's easier and better for us to oppress these people and tell them that no, you cannot be represented. But this will only lead to violence, ladies and gentlemen. It will lead to much more violence in the streets by the actual people because these parties are a safety channel. These parties are a way to express your opinions in a non-violent way. And shortly on my fourth point, what is the focus of the far-right parties? I sort of covered this. I sort of said that it is bad. The focus of these right-wing right parties is bad. We accept that. We say, yes, they're extremists. Yes, we do not want the minorities outside of Europe. But as I mentioned, these people need to express themselves in some way because the alternative to being represented is going out on the streets and protesting. That's why I beg you to oppose this motion. Thank you.